I'm Reagan Tunstall from Tunstall's Teaching Tidbits. Today we're going to talk all about guided math. We're going to talk about the difference between guided math on Teachers by Teachers and the guided math kits on Hand to Mind. Once we talk about that, we're going to talk all about stations. So how to store them and then different resources that I offer and what they will cover for your students. Let's get started with guided math. So, on Teachers by Teachers, you can download the paper version of Guided Math. I have Guided Math for kinder through fifth grade, and for each grade level, there are nine units. So, those nine units are going to cover nine math strands, and that's going to cover all of your math standards for that year. I do have a free standards alignment for each grade level as well, so you can really mix and match those units and teach them in any order that works for your scope and sequence along with mixing and matching units or lessons within each unit. So let's look at one unit. This is going to be first grade addition and subtraction. So this is unit two in first grade. Within each unit you will get lesson plans that are going to give you math mini lesson, discussion questions, materials, small group lessons with uh, ideas on remediation, on level, and enrichment. So behind each lesson plan are the materials you need for that lesson. The way that I like to organize my units is either um, printing them out and having them in a binder like this, which I'm gonna also link all my labels for you. So you can have those labels as well. So the unit goes in a binder, the lesson plans and any black line masters, and then the pieces to the math mats and game cards and things like that for the mini lessons and the small group instruction I like to put in baggies in a separate place like Sterilite drawer or um, I, I also use scrapbooking boxes. So for that reason, I'm going to grab this. You can also download these labels too. So you can have your lesson plans in the scrapbooking box um, and those are free as well. And I'll link that in the description. So on Teachers by Teachers, there are nine units. Each unit is about $16. And if you want the full year of guided math, it's $125. And that's going to be a download per teacher. So um, that's what it looks like on Teachers by Teachers um, under Reagan Tunstall. After I released Guided Math, um, I began to partner with Hand to Mind. And Hand to Mind is an amazing company full of teachers. And we decided to go ahead and have prepped Guided Math kits that schools and districts could purchase that would be delivered to um, the school or the home um, for that teacher or school. That sounds weird. Okay, so here is a kit that would be delivered. It is fully prepped. It is the exact same content as the guided math units, but um, in a kit that's ready to teach. So in the kit, you have your lesson plan book, and this is second grade unit three. It also has, just like mine have, pre-assessments and post-assessments. I think I forgot to mention that. You get your warm-ups poster, which is also in the download version, and then any mats or cards that go with the different lessons, but they have a, um, a coating on them so students can use them with dry erase markers. So they're ready to teach, and they're in multiple sets, so that if you need them for a group of six, you're ready to go. So. I'm going to show you the back of one of the teacher's books here. So this is the back of one of the teacher books, and you can see the nine units that are listed. So for K through fifth, you'll have nine different math strands, and again, you can teach those in any order that works for you. So to get the entire bundle of prepped kits, you're going to need nine of these ready-to-go kits. One kit is one unit on TPT. So the $16 unit on TPT is 
$79 prepped on hand to mind. And then the full year on TPT is $125, the download version. And then on hand to mind, the full year all nine is $699. So that's per teacher. All right, so that's the difference between guided math um, on Teachers Pay Teachers and guided math prepped kit. One thing that the guided math does not have that I think has caused confusion is centers or workstations. Yes, there's a lot of materials that go with guided math and that's gonna help you teach your mini lesson and your small groups. Think of that as your main course, that's your driving instruction. So those are your priority standards that you're focusing on. Your stations are going to be your side dishes to that main course. So. That is not included in guided math, but I have tons of them. So I'm going to go now to stations and show you how I use them and what types I have for your grade level. All right, now we're going to show how you go from the guided math lesson plan to workstations. So I'm going to start by sharing what I use for my workstations in my classroom, and then I'll go into organization and types of stations. So, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna teach my math warm-up, and that is going to be, um, I do have warm-up ideas in guided math, but I also have digital warm-ups for the entire year, like ready to go, ready to um, project to your students. That's for K to four. So, math warm-ups first, which is essentially your number talk, and it goes through that procedure. Then I teach my lesson plan from guided math. So I'm gonna do my math mini lesson on my priority standard. I'm going to then move into this first icon, which is small group. So I go from the math mini lesson to pulling a small group. While I pull a small group, these are the other choices going on in my classroom at that time. So the rest of my students who are not with me in small group doing this lesson here out of guided math, they are engaged in these four types of workstations. The first type of workstation is math on technology. So this actually spells stack, S-T-A-C-K. My students don't know the acronym. I just like to, to do that because, you know, teachers love acronyms. But T is for technology. So students go to math on a device, and that can be a program that your school has purchased or apps, websites, and things like that that you have collected for your grade level that are gonna cover those standards that you're teaching. I'm not gonna really spend time on technology today because I have all of the actual um, stations here prepped for these three icons. So the A in stack is the application station. This is where students apply what they've been learning. So the application station is going to be um, part of small group because it is the independent practice of what's going on in our small group lesson. Now, some students go here before they come to small group. So for that reason, my application station is going to be not today's lesson. It's going to lag behind. So it might be a week behind, a day behind, or it could just be spiral review, but it's going to tell me how students are doing with independent practice. So the resources I have for the independent practice station or the application station um, are the following. The first one is called print and practice. So it's really just skill practice. So I wanna see how students are doing without the help of me in a small group in close proximity. And the print and practice resources um, look like this. They are just skills pages. So guided math is divided into your nine master hands for whatever grade level you are, so is print and practice. So you would look for your print and practice by strand. So if you're on geometry and you're second grade, then that's the one you would look for. Um, and it's just going to give you skill pages that you can put at that station so you can see how students are doing independently. So print and practice is one type of resource that I have for that. Another type of resource that I have for the application station is um, math supplements. There are actually three 
bundles within the Mass Supplements line of products. The first one is Number Chats, the second one is Exit Tickets, and the third one is Practice Pages. So, I'm going to show you all three. We're going to put this in. Okay. So the number chats, these I like to do once and at most twice a week. It's almost like doing an exit ticket before the lesson. So it's a um, math talk or number talk that you actually have a recording sheet for. So I like to kind of assess how they're doing, do a little quick check, um, but not every day because we don't have time for that every day during our number talk. So the number chat gives you a written version of your um, math warm-up. So that's going to actually be used at the beginning of your math block. The second resource um, that I have within the supplements line is exit tickets. And just like it is, sounds, you're going to do this at the end of the lesson. Um, but you can sometimes fit them into that application station, especially if you need something quick or a couple of them. So it's going to give you a quick check on different skills. And I always set my products up to where you look for that skill that you're working on. And um, so you have your nine math strands and one of them is addition and subtraction. So then you're looking for, I'm first grade and I need addition and subtraction. So that's the one you would look for. And the third resource in math supplements are just called practice pages. So if I'm looking for my graphs and data standards, then I might need this one, and it's going to give me practice pages that are great for that application station so that I can see how students are doing. So just to show you, I've got number patterns and skip counting, so this might be kinder or first. I've got time for second grade. So these um, math supplements products run K to four right now. So you can look for your different math strands and those practice pages. Our next station is our Create Math. This is our math journal station. So just to recap, we have small group, technology, application station, and now we're on Create Math, and that's our math journal. I have two types of math journals, and both will take you through the year. So it might just be your preference on which type you prefer. The first one is actually called Math Journal, and it has nine volumes to take you through your entire school year, having a station that students work in their journals. The Math Journal station, actually I'm gonna show you this lovely Math Journal. These sweet babies have seen some love. So this is actually my teacher journal, and it is, an example journal that I put under the document camera so that students can see formatting and to know how to build those pages. It eliminates a lot of questions having an example journal like this. All right, so let's talk about what Math Journal covers. The Math Journal product I keep in a basket and I keep them run off for a week, two weeks, and if I'm lucky, a whole month in advance. Um, and then I just pull the journal page that I want them to do that day and place it into the document camera, pop open the example journal, and say, this is what we're doing today. Um, the math journal volumes, each one will focus on a main skill, which is going to correlate to guided math, but it will also spiral review this, the previous skills. So it's going to give you... Um, a little bit of work on your new skill as students master that, but also strengthen the skills you have taught previous. So it's a spiral review type of format. Um, that's how I work through Math Journal. It is available K to four, and the download looks. This would be like the bundle for third grade, but the download is going to look like this off of Teachers Pay Teachers. Here's a first grade version of only one volume. Each volume is roughly 20 to 25 activities. So it's going to be um, plenty of materials to get you through each month of journaling. Sometimes I even let my students do a journal page two days in a row if it's a long one. Okay, then I had teachers saying, wait, I don't want my kids to have all these different skills within one volume. I want it to be 
all on addition or all on measurement or all on telling time. So then I created the numbers notebook. Numbers notebook is essentially the same formatting as journals. So you're going to get nine volumes, each volume having 20 to 25 activities, but now a numbers notebook, they're focused. So volume one is all about number sense for kinder and first grade and um, so on. So it's going to work through your math strands and it's going to stay focused on just that math strand. Um, so the pages look like this. And you'll see the standard here on top. I have both Common Core and Teeks version. And then you would just show the example journal and then choose, this is kindergarten, choose that page and um, display it for students. I'm going to show you inside a numbers notebook. And um, it's going to have a title with the standard. This is the Teak uh, for Texas but I also have Common Core as well. So you would just choose, this is a, an example of a Common Core. Um, you would just choose the standards that you wanted and then um, you would show your students. I highly recommend making a teacher journal. And when I started this, I just did that week's activities only. So I worked up to having the full year prepped my students only get one composition book and we just go through it front, back, front, back. Um, if they accidentally mess up, no big deal, but we get back to the right page and we keep going. And these journal is one of those things where um, it's something that we do whole group until they get the procedure down. Uh, sometimes I cut and they fold. Sometimes I fold and they glue. So it's a process of learning but um, over just a little bit of training time, then they can become independent on it. And it's actually a well-loved center. They beg me to hurry up and tell them what journal is that day. All right, so we've covered small group, math on technology, application station, create math, and now, your favorite of mine, we're on K, kinesthetic, hands-on math centers. Where do I even start? All right, so I like to put my stations in baggies and I'll always this box up. And I do that so I can see what the station is and then um, all of the pieces inside. This is not groundbreaking. However, let's talk about storage. So um, one way that works for me, someone who has 2,000 math stations, is to use these big boxes. I got these at Ikea and I filled up an entire bookshelf with my nine math strands and then I would just pull from the front of the box and then put in the back when it was time to trade them out. So I do have all of the math strand labels for you and again it's going to have there's going to be a download that's linked in the description that you can get all of these labels from. So if you are like me and you have a million math centers already prepped, that might be a good solution for you. Now, I also have some other ways to organize. When I have students handling stations, they're not getting into my box. I will put them out in some kind of accessible tub. So these are, I'm going to show you what these are in a second, but these, um, this is one idea. These are the dish pans from the dollar store. They have them in white and black right now. Michael's has scrapbooking boxes for $4. And um, you can put labels on them and put your stations in those. And then um, Costco has these scrapbooking boxes that are colored. And they come in sets of five, I think. Um, and then the dollar store, I love tubs. I use tubs because they're so easy for students to carry to the carpet, which is where our kinesthetic station happens. All right, so when I put stations out weekly for my students to use, I put them in something accessible like this. But when I'm not having them out, they're either stored in a scrapbook box or the big giant box that I just showed you. So. 
What I'm going to do now is show you some of the different sets that I offer. So I have workstations, hands-on workstations for kinder through fourth right now. And um, I'm going to show you some of the different sets I have and what they are meant to cover. So we're going to start here and just ignore these numbers because they may not make any sense. But these labels will be in the download. Um, this is how I would put out a station for my students. So I would put out four or five a week, and I've done it so many different ways over the years. When I didn't have enough stations, they got to choose a station from the one tub that held stations. And then I just continued to make more and build up that bank. So it's okay if you're not at that point yet where you have enough stations for students to do something every single day. It's okay for students to do the same thing more than once. In fact, I'll put something out, take it away, bring it back a couple weeks later, a month later. So um, it is okay for students to play games multiple times. All right, so this station is from a set called Stations by Standard, and it is organized in the same way that Guided Math is organized. So each strand has a unit, and there are 15 games for that strand. So this is going to be in the place value strand. I put the direction card, the pieces, and then any manipulative in that would enhance instruction. If the game has a recording sheet, it's also in there. And then students have a folder that they keep in their desk. And if they have a recording sheet, it goes to the folder. So stations by standard is going to be K1 and 2. And you would look up your um, grade level and you can buy like the whole year or you can just buy strand by strand. Another station we have in the tub and this is from my monthly math stations. So these are beachy word problems and there is room on the cards for students to work out the math and then they, and a place for them to write the answer equation. Um, so for this one, this comes from my monthly math centers, which I have for K-2-2, and it's going to be spiral review. So it doesn't focus on just one strand per volume, but it will give you 10 stations on different skills for students to practice and apply. Alrighty. In our next tub, we have math puzzles. This is a newer product, and I have it again for K1 and 2. Don't worry, 3rd and 4th, I'm getting to you. And it gives you 26 different math puzzles for your grade level. Students take a math mat like this, and then they look at the problem embedded in a cute picture, 81 cents, and they have to find that match on the math mat. It's going to cover all sorts of different skills. They're going to place that on the math mat, and it's going to end up building a picture um, when they get all of the pieces correct. So that's called Math Puzzles, and it's K1 and 2. Oh, well, I have this one backwards. It's there. Okay, third and fourth. It's your turn. So for third and fourth grade, I have one bundle for each grade level that's going to be by topic, just like Guided Math. So it's going to go through your different math strands and give you stations for those math strands. Um, I don't have multiple different sets for third and fourth. I just have the one big bundle that's going to take you through all of your math strands. So it's just called third grade math centers or fourth grade math centers. And um, the way that I display those is I have the um, picture on the front of the baggie. Then I have the recording sheets run off. I also have an answer key, and you can kind of keep this by you or have some sort of way where um, sometimes students check their answers or maybe you want to check them. And then I have the game cards that they're using. So um, again, it's going to be different depending on the different skills, but that's going to take third and fourth grade all the way through the year, all of your different math strands. Okay? And then... The last one I'm showing in these tubs, this one is called Building Number Sense, and these are um, math mats. 
And with the different math mats, I like to give my students different manipulatives. So since we're in the summer right now, but we might, we might be planning for fall, um, this is a good one for, you can use it in small group, you can use it um, as a morning tub, but you can also use it in a workstation. So fish in a tank. So this is for building number sense. You can give them a target number. You can um, have them make an equation but I give them <clears throat> a corresponding math manipulative. These are little fish erasers, and I give them a dry erase marker so that they can write the number, count them, make an equation. It just depends on their level. And it's going to give you all sorts of different um, math maps. I think possibly like 50 different math maps. Beans in a pot, I would just use real beans. Ducks in a pond, I've got little Ducky erasers, they can count, touch, make math equations. Buttons on a coat, I've got great buttons from hand to mind. Um, pepperoni on a pizza, I like to use counters, but use the red side to make the pepperoni. And I also have, again, there's like 50 of these butter on a potato so they would use the yellow side to make the butter um, and it just goes on and on and on so that's a fun one for um, and it has a lot of uses um, morning tubs small group and then workstation that one's called building number sets okay guys the last thing we're going to go through is what's in the dollar store tubs these are actually from Michael's, but I typically get my dollar store tubs at the dollar store. Um, these labels are also going to be in the download for you. So um, just like I display in the dish pan tub, it's going to have the instruction card and any pieces that the students may need to play the game, as well as dry erase marker and manipulatives that they need, recording sheets as well. So. This popcorn place value game is in the monthly math centers for K1 and 2, depending on which grade level it is. Here's a station I haven't talked about yet. These are word problems. If you are a school or district where you have um, a requirement with word problems um, beyond the normal um, amount of word problems that we do, then this product is totally going to help you with that. So, one thing I do want to say is um, these, I don't know what they're even called, bright and white sleeves perhaps. The, they are awesome when you don't want to laminate or you didn't laminate and you need that station. So um, this is a low prep station, the word problems. You slide it in and students take the dry erase marker and then they work right on the map. I also give them any manipulatives that might go looking for the dry erase marker that I didn't put in there. Um, this is going to be word problems on graphing. So as you can see, the different math mats have um, the word problem embedded with the graph. But there are word problems for every grade level and every strand. So for example, if they're on time, I throw a clock in there, I throw a dry erase marker in there, and then they will grab I have the word problem cards in there. Sorry, I don't have enough hands. So they grab the one that they want to do, they place it here in the blank spot, and then they work through that word problem. So I have different math mats depending on the strand and the grade level. Um, this would be subtraction, probably first, perhaps kinder, because it's going to give you a 10 frame, a number bond, and up to 10, so maybe kinder or first, um, and so on. So you can kind of tell, it's going to give them built-in strategies to use to solve those word problems. If students aren't ready to read those yet, then I use them in uh, small group lessons for an added little instruction. The next one. The next set of stations, these are super adorable. If you love to decorate your classroom for the seasons and change things out, 
then um, these are called monthly math and literacy centers, or not monthly, I'm so sorry, seasonal math and literacy centers. And there's four seasons, so there's four sets of 20 stations. Um, what I like to do is give them the instruction card, manipulatives, the game pieces, and then the dry erase, whoops. So for example, 10 minus blank equals two. So they can use the manipulatives, and then they're looking for the answer card to fit in the little spot. There's also, um, in the seasonal games, there's recording sheets um, for many of them, and students will put that in their math folder. So if you love seasonal stations, these are going to be um, Spiral Review, then look for seasonal math and literacy stations. All right, and the fourth tub is going to come from another low prep option. This is also, um, this is actually first and second grade only, and these are called write and wipe. So you don't even have to laminate. Um, a lot of them are just one page <clears throat> that you could slip in. Well, they have multiple pages, but I like to do it back to back or use multiple sleeves to really make it low prep. This one is called Cactus Comparing. Students are comparing um, three-digit and four-digit. Well, it's a place value station. So for example, 1,200 is less than, greater than, or equal to um, 1,199. So I've got place value blocks for students. I've got dry erase markers for them to fill out their answers. And then I also have their little recording sheet booklets. And the booklet is going to go along with all of the different write and wipe activities. So look for write and wipe if you're looking for low prep. And um, those are also going to be by strand. So all place value or all measurement, all time, etc. Oh my gosh, I think we're done. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and going through all of that fun station talk. Uh, look for my next video and don't forget all the free labels in the download. See you next time. Um, type, bleh. And today I'm gonna share the different, <laughs> no, or unit three, actually that's all wise, no. So from Tunstall's teaching tidbits, I can't. <laughs> This is first grade. Okay. Oh, well, look at that. Well, each unit that you can purchase, <laughs> and, or the skills, um, shoot, stop.